Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. He is Lindsey Crosby. I am Ben Taylor. And Lindsey, do we not think that Ronald Acuna Jr. is the best player in baseball at this point after the Dodgers series? I mean, the way that he responded to Mookie Betts being put into uh, first place in the MVP odds makes me kind of want to go and like Photoshop some stuff and give it to Ronald before every series and say, hey, they they think this guy's better than you now. Just so he goes off and goes nuts. I mean, in like, just, okay, just the last week since Mookie Betts was put into to, uh, first place in the MVP race, briefly, mm -hmm. 406 average, four home runs, eight runs, 11 RBIs, four stolen bases in seven games. And like now, like he's within shooting distance of that 40 home runs now. He needs eight home runs in the month of September to hit 40 home runs, which was his original goal. And he'd be at least 40-60, if not more, because he's already at 63 stolen bases and already has a record because nobody's ever had 30 home runs and 60 stolen bases. Correct. Like, that, that's the one thing that sticks out in my mind. He has done something nobody else has done. So when it gets time for the MVP voting, and let me ask you this. This, this wasn't in the rundown. Do you think it hurts him that he still does – like his sidestep around third, and people still may think that he's a little flashy when he's really not. In our opinion, he's not. That's the entire team's personality. If you watch him in the dugout, if you're a Braves fan and you watch him, you've got Ozzy, Arcia, you know, Acuna, even Harris Jr. jumps in, or Harris second jumps in there every now and then and, and cuts up with them. Like that's their personality. That's not flashy to me. It just looks like they're a bunch of grown men that are acting like kids. I think if this was 2019, Ronald, where he's he's trying to get a 40-40 season, uh, you know, he's he's having a good year, and and he's doing that stuff. I think that's one thing. But like he's batting 335, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to 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 ding him for doing a, a a euro step as he goes around third base when he's batting 330. If you're looking at MVP stuff, it's kind of hard to ding him on some of these things. And I think the fact that the whole team does it actually makes it a little more understandable that, okay, yeah, he does it too. It's like, well, they're all doing it. Marcelo Zuna's like 33 and he's doing this. <laughs> Marcelo there was a, Zuna starts, there was a starts video. celebrating at shortstop and he makes his way all the way around doing some <laughs> sort of hand gesture or something and pointing and loving himself. And I'm he's doing the clap and I'm like, it's like bro, gracious. get to home plate already. <laughs> there was a video before the game of 70 something year old Ron Washington dancing in the dugout. Yes. And it's yes, like, I saw that. okay, like this is a team thing. They all do it this. Is. And so it's, so, and so I think his stats are so unimpeachable that if you if somebody has to go to the well, he dances as he's rounding the bases to ding him <laughs> and not vote for him. They weren't going to vote for him anyway. Well, and you you heard uh, Glavin said it whenever I uh, got a chance to visit with him, as he said, there are a lot of players in baseball that do things as well as Acuna does them. None of them do everything that he does as well. He's the entire package. And that's what sets him apart from the Mookies of the world. And don't get me wrong. Mookie's the only, in my opinion, Mookie's the only one that's given him a race for it. And the reason being is because Mookie's played second, right, center, short. short. He's filled in at, at, at first one point in time during the season. They said the other night they were talking about it. I don't think he's pitched yet in like a blowout game. Um, but he's basically played minimum five positions thus far on the season. And so I get it. He's your utility guy that still bats over 300 and can hit for power as small as he is. But at the end of the day, he ain't yanking the bases that Ronnie is. I mean, that's the, that's again, he does a lot of stuff. Good. He doesn't do everything good that Ronald does. Yeah. And that's to me, most valuable player should be a player that, can contribute in every single facet to your team. And I mean, even, even defensively, Ronald doesn't get graded out fantastic, but when you include what he can do with his arm, yes. he does it like, like the, the, the versions of the defensive fielding stats that include your, uh, your arm, you know, your outfit assists and things like that, they grade him a lot higher. And so nobody can do everything he can do. And I think that's, he's the MVP and it shouldn't be, I'm not saying he could stop right now for the rest of the season and still win it, but he should be the prohibitive favorite unless Mookie hits 20 home runs in September. Correct.
With that said, winning the series, that it seems to be the correct formula. I know that it'll leave everybody a bad taste in their mouth uh, the way the series wrapped up with a 3-1 loss. But uh, the important thing is it's the first time that the Braves have won the series quite a while in L.A. Yeah, I mean, they were 2-10 in in the regular season entering this series. And they had not won a four-game series in L.A. since 2009. And even the, the, the postseason in 21, where Atlanta beat them to go to the World Series, Atlanta was only 1-2 and two in L.A. And so this series, to me, did a couple things for Atlanta. And like one is it said that this is a different Braves team than some of those other Braves teams in the past, right? Mm-hmm. They're not scared of facing an amazing juggernaut like the Dodgers. Like the, they're not they're not scared, they're not odd. They're like, "Okay, we're going to go out and play baseball." Yep. But then also they won in high scoring games, they won in low scoring games. The Dodgers offense is the second best offense in baseball behind Atlanta's and they held them to very low run numbers in all four games. Mm-hmm. And it's like not necessarily something that we knew that the Braves pitching, there was just a month ago, we were like, hey, is the Braves pitching okay? Yeah. And Mm -hmm. look what they did in this series. You had your four guys. You had Freed, you had Schreider, you had Morton, you had Elder go out, and you won three of the four games. And arguably, you didn't lose game four because of Charlie Morton. You lost game four because you couldn't hit off of Bobby Miller. And so it's like, okay, this is a different Braves team. And uh, they won the series. They now have a six-game lead for uh, home field advantage in the National League, and they hold the tiebreaker on the Dodgers as well. And your schedule's pretty favorable coming up. Other than seven games with Philly or six games with Philly, you don't play anybody that's good the rest of the year. So I feel good about like this series set Atlanta up to almost cruise into hmm. the postseason. You just have to hope they can keep the bats hot as they get in, into October. Well, you made a good point there, and that that is, and that was my next point on on the rundown that we had was this team is just never out of the fight. Uh, it just never feels like even in the final game of the series, three one, Olsen throws a blooper in the left, and you're thinking, okay, here we go. Ozuna's fixing to tie this up because yep. he's been hot as of late and about to kill the dreams of Dodger fans. And and now that didn't happen, but I think that's the mentality that this team has. You could have seen it see- coming though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you saw that the 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 game before with Arcia, who stepped up there and who would have thought that he would have been the guy in extra innings to park a three-run bomb in left center. Yeah, I mean, it's so many Braves are having like career years this year. And we have a, a, a story coming out on Monday about some of the Braves statistical milestones this year and where some of the individual players are towards their career highs and things like that. And it's At this point, it's not fluky, right? This is who the Braves are. The Braves coaching staff makes these players better. The the players play better when they get here. And, I mean, it's very, very early. But, Mm -hmm. knock on wood, this feels like one of the better Braves teams in my lifetime. And, obviously, it's very early. Postseason, a lot of stuff can happen. A lot of lucks and and play there. But from a sheer talent perspective, this is one of the best Braves teams in my lifetime. Just because every position is so deep. I agree with that, and I think a lot of that helps. I mean, I mentioned um, Arcia. Uh, that's, I don't think anybody, myself included, had the expectations. I understand he was an all-star. I understand he's got some accolades. I think that when we were making that transition from Dansby to we thought maybe Grissom, we thought Arcia, you know, splitting time to maybe that being a platoon position at the first part of the year – And for some reason, something has just come alive on him on this season. I mean, you got the all star numbers, you got the walk, you know, you got the the walk offs that he's had, you've got the the three run bombs that he hits late in games. He just seems unfazed by this. And that that was one thing Snitaker said post game. He said that he's just one of those guys that he has, he has, he referred to him, he has a low heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, it's to me, it's very much that's the culture. I was talking to Ben Ingram for our, for this pod a couple weeks ago, and he talked about, like, just this Braves team is different. Like, all of these guys, they believe in one another. They believe in, in what they're doing. They believe in what the organization, how they've set them up to be successful. And it's, th- this is the kind of thing that drives, like, the statistical folks nuts. Because, like, you can't measure any of this, right? You, right. you, you, you can't measure how you can take a guy and like a Jesse Chavez, and he can p- pitch great for you. And you can ship him to L.A. And he's so bad, they DFA him in three weeks. And yep. he comes back to Atlanta and signs. But the guy you got for him 
is Rysel Iglesias, who is now just named uh, reliever of the of the month for the National yeah. League for August. And it's this is the stuff you can't quantify, but this is the Atlanta Braves. And it's a it's great to be a fan of this team. Boy, I would have loved to sit on that panel about Iglesias, but uh, they didn't ask me my opinion on that. So uh, I got to take a quick break real quick. And I got to thank Ford Stokes and the fine folks at Active Wealth as uh, Ford hooking us up. And he's calling on all Braves fans. We need you as well as he needs you to thank that new sponsor and be better for it as Ford Stokes, founder of President of Active Wealth, host of Active Wealth Show on AM 920, The Answer, and author of the informative book, Annuity 360, our new primary sponsor, Best Part is he wants to give each and every Braves fan a free gift, his book, Annuity 360. All you have to do is go to annuity360.net, provide your contact information. Ford's going to send you a complimentary copy of that book. Important to note that his team at Active Wealth specialize in assisting pre-retirees and retirees. Ford and his team are eager to assist to make you the most of your financial resources. Again, go to annuity 360.net for more information. Uh, get back to the Braves and Dodgers just a little bit to recap really quick. The two things. Uh, number one, did the Dodgers give up uh, late in the series when they pulled Mookie and Freddie, and then they just happened to get a rookie that caught a hanger and put them within, uh, within a few of the Braves? And number two, uh, we talked about Mookie Betts and him being a MVP candidate, but MVP candidates, as he did in that final um, game of the series, they don't make base running errors where they have no idea how many outs are on the board. Yeah, uh, they they gave up when they pulled Freddie and Mookie and got lucky. That was Colton Wong's first at bat as a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was DFA'd right. earlier in the season by Seattle and was in their minor leagues for a while. And they called him up and he did that. They they gave up and got lucky on that. Um, but I think when you compare the two, Ronald outplayed Mookie, and it wasn't necessarily that close. Yes, Mookie adds some value because he there was multiple games where he started off at second base and then shifted to right field partway through the game after a pinch hitter in the fourth or fifth inning or whatever they did it because L.A. loves to do it super early mm -hmm. and then move guys all around. But it was... The base running blunder ended up being big for them. And yes, they won, but it... it, it Ended in an inning early. When you're in scoring mm -hmm. position, like or a chance to be in scoring position, you can't do something like that. And it's easy to say that's not an MVP play. It, it is a mistake. Guys make mistakes. Ronald's made base running mistakes before, but it does feel super easy, easy and nice to just kind of dunk on him for it and say, "Hey, man, <laughs> like you can't do yeah. that. You should have done that." But yeah, yeah. Listen, it's an easy target. Had to take advantage of it. Uh, speaking of. Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, and this is both baseball and non-baseball related. Lindsey, did he not have the best day ever during this series? Yeah. So if <laughs> if you missed the, I actually think we might have been the one, the first ones to get the story up on it. But Ronald Acuna Jr. got married last week. Uh, long story short, he's been dating his now wife for about five years, and they're both from Venezuela. And mm -hmm. she was going to have to leave for visa reasons. And she was going to have to be back in Venezuela for at least three months before she could come back to the States. And they have two children together. The children were born here. They could stay, but Ronald is obviously a busy person. Yeah. And so they were going to have to go with her. And so they coordinated and they got married like a quick 24 hours. They got the ceremony. Yep. His agent got the ceremony uh, booked, scheduled and executed and done. And then he goes out that night and sets the record for 30 home runs and 60 stolen bases in a season with a grand slam. Mm. And it's like, okay, best day ever. <laughs> yeah, that is a great day. I mean, it's it, you know, one of the best lines Matt Olson said. He said, I'm thinking about renewing my vows next series. Maybe something like that happens. Uh, Snitaker didn't even know till after the game. Uh, that's when somebody brought it up. So, I, I mean, that's how quickly it all came about. But, uh, you're right. Uh, kudos to the the writing staff for Braves today because there were a lot of rumors going around that seemed to be one of the most solid as far as exactly what happened uh, type deals. That those of you that were able to get on uh, online and read it and uh, and great for you and the rest of the staff for kind of coming up with that and, and putting it together and and throwing it out there because I was actually reading it while the game's going on. And then you start seeing tweets come about from other writers. And, uh, they start talking about it during the broadcast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So 
uh, one of those deals where uh, kudos to you guys and, uh, and for, for, for grabbing that and jumping all over it. So uh, I will Thanks. say this. Now we, we move on and uh, we get past them. And, 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 you know, what's next is matchups. We talked about the season. We don't want to look forward to the Phillies. Um, and, and start looking ahead, but that seems to be the most important couple of series that's going to be taking place. Uh, but what's next for the Braves? Yeah, so you've you've got off day on Monday, which is nice. They've been gone from home for a while. Yeah. They've been on the West Coast. That way, they had they had three different series in three West Coast cities. Uh, but off day on Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, three against the Cardinals, 50, fifty nine and seventy eight, last place in the Central. Uh, Miles Mikolas pitches on Monday, mm-hmm. four. ERA over four and a half, double digit losses on the year. Dakota Hudson on Wednesday, Adam Wainwright on Thursday. Adam Wainwright's ERA is 8.1. Oh. Yeah. Um, and so Atlanta He's has. The guy a couple of years ago I was wanting to bring on board. So I'm glad yeah. that didn't happen. So Atlanta's rotation is officially TBD on Tuesday, Spencer Strider on Wednesday, Max Fried on Thursday. And Tuesday would have been Darius Vines. You sent Darius Vines down when you brought Ben Heller back up. And mm-hmm. so, a couple questions as to who would pitch on Tuesday. Michael Soroka would be on regular rest to take the start on Tuesday. But, also, Michael Soroka's date. The uh, We wrote about this in, in mid-August. If he comes up before September 13th, and you don't send him back down before the season ends, he will accrue enough service time to be a free agent after 2024. Whereas okay. if you wait until after the 13th to call him up, he won't, he'll be a free agent after 2025. And the reason that's important is because Max Freed is a free agent after 2024. And Charlie Morton, if you pick up his, his club option for next year, is a free agent after 2024. So if you call Soroka up for Tuesday, you have to send him back down because if not, you could lose three starting pitchers in the same offseason after 2024. So even though the position players are there, it could really hurt the Braves pitching wise uh, whenever we roll around a year from now. So uh, something to keep in mind and seeing how they, they play things uh, with uh, Alex Anthopoulos and, and the rest of the crew. And um, I, I know that if you, not that I'm saying dynasty is out there in front, but the Braves with the moves they've made thus far, Lindsay, I mean, would you not agree they're set up for the next two to three years to have a really good run over these next three years, as long as they could keep arms up on the mound. I'd argue probably the next five years. Like, I mean, from now, I mean, you, you could go as far as saying now through the end of the decade, but really probably the next three to five years, this mm-hmm. is this is the largest of competitive windows that you would see in modern MLB. The way that contracts work, the way that free agents work, the money involved. You know, a lot of teams, their window is a year or two years. This mm-hmm. feels this feels like it's an extended window of World Series contention, like you said, provided you could keep the arms. And I think that's why you've seen so many of these drafts be so heavy towards pitching, right? Mm. Because you have almost all your position players locked up, but your rotation for 2025 could be Spencer Strider and then, I guess, Kyle Wright and Elder, A.J. Yeah. smith Shaver, Herson Waldrop. It's not bad, but like... Yeah. Mike Soroka could make that better. And so that's the question. If you can keep the pitching pipeline going and keep getting good quality playoff starters, you're in a three to five year window where you're not a lock, but you're pretty, it's pretty good. You're going to make the postseason and be able to go deep. And the question will be, will luck be in your favor to win the World Series? Yeah, it feels like even on a down year, they can still make the postseason as like a wild card or something of that nature Mm -hmm. in the next couple of years. So uh, keep that in mind. My prediction, uh, two of three out of St. Louis. You? I think I'm going to go with the sweep. I don't normally do sweeps. Tom Glavin on this show talked about how hard (laughs) it is to sweep a team, but I feel like it's been a while, and I just I've been a while since I've called a sweep, so I'm going to call a sweep against St. Louis. Great. We have a hiccup. We'll go one and one and two this next time around. All because of uh, me and Lindsay, because we're the ones that threw that out there. So uh, nice. he's Lindsay Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. All the written work. Find it at Braves Today, Braves Today.com. Lindsay, as always, I greatly appreciate your time, sir. Thank you.